Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical flexor rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. So today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more, uh, I mean, um, a set of, that is 10 MCQs I am going to discuss in my next uh, topic on scrotal swelling, that is hydrocele. So all these 10 MCQs are only from hydrocele. Among the 10, 7 will be case-based and 3 will be uh, the recall type of questions. MCQs are used worldwide, both in qualifying as well as in competitive medical entrance exam, and I need not emphasize the importance of MCQs to you. In all the exams, yeah, now almost in all uh, medical schools or medical uh, colleges, they are using this MCQ as your assessment, main assessment. So these series of videos will give you a systematic way of revising the whole spectrum of general surgery topic by topic. Before going to discuss the 10 MCQs, I want you to watch that particular video on hydrocele. The all 10 MCQs today we are going to discuss are based, are going to be based on this video only. Kindly now pause this video, click this link and watch the video on hydrocele first and after watching the video and learn the content thoroughly, now let us discuss the MCQs one by one. MCQ number one, a 30 year old male present with a painless right sided scrotal swelling that has progressively enlarged over the past year. On examination, the swelling is confined to the scrotum, it is transluminant, and the testis cannot be palpated separately. There is no cough impulse. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Varicocele. B. Hydrocele. C. Epididymalsis. D. Testicular torsion. Of course, the correct answer is Hydrocele. The features of painless progressive scrotal swelling with transelimination and inability to feel the testis separately are the characteristic of a hydrocele. The other diagnosis, varicocele, epididymalsis, and testicular torsion, all these things, you can feel the testis separately, even though these are also scrotal swelling, testicular torsion will be very painful. MCQ number two, a 45 year old male present with scrotal swelling. The swelling is transluminal and tense, but painless. On examination, the testis cannot be palpated separately. Which of the following is the most appropriate treatment for a large hydrocele in an adult patient? Okay, number A, conservative management, inguinal hyniotomy, C, large splication, D, jebulase operation. Because they are asking for a large hydrocele, the correct answer is, of course, D, jebulase operation. For large hydrocele in adults, jebulase operation, that is incision and eversion of the sac, is the preferred surgical treatment. We should not do conservative management or even aspiration of the hydrocele. That is not the correct answer. Inguinal herniotomy is for, uh, this is for pediatric uh, hydrocele or pediatric hernia, okay, we can do just herniotomy. Large splication is also for hydrocele, but for small hydrocele, 
we have to do large splication. For a larger one, Jabulay's operation is the correct answer. MCQ3, a 25-year-old male present with a small hydrocele. On examination, it is found to be tensely cystic and transliminant. What is the best initial surgical procedure for this condition? We have discussed in the previous, of course, it is now large splication. Large splication is recommended for small hydrocele where the hydrocele sac is plicated without, uh, I mean, uh, excision. So you have to just plicate so that it will form a cuff around the testis so that the absorbing surface will be reduced. That is the main idea of doing plication. NCQ4, a 40-year-old male present with a long-standing hydrocele. Which of the following is a potential complication of untreated hydrocele? Varicocele, atrophy of the testis, C, scrotal abscess, D, testicular torsion. So they are telling it is a long-standing hydrocele. So the correct answer is B, that is atrophy of the testis. Complication of hydrocele include atrophy of the testis, especially when the hydrocele is very large and long-standing. The varicocele, scrotal abscess, testicular torsion, all these things are not complications. <coughs> Coming to MCQ5, a six-month-old infant is diagnosed with a congenital hydrocele. The parents report that the swelling decreases in size during the night time. This is what is called diurnal variation. What is the most appropriate next step in the management? So, A is immediate surgery, B is conservative management, C, large splication, D, jubilation. Because it's a six months old infant, we have to do conservative management immediately. Congenital hydrocele often resolve spontaneously by the age of one to two years. So we have to do conservative management until two years. This is usually the initial approach. MCQ6. A patient with a large hydrocele undergoes Jebulase operation. Which of the following describes the technique used in this procedure? A. Eversion of the hydrocele sac, plication of the hydrocele sac, complete excision of the hydrocele sac, and D. Incision and drainage of the hydrocele. So it is now A, that is incision and then eversion of the hydrocele sac, is the correct answer. Jabulay's operation involves incision and aversion. C. Aversion of the hydrocele sac, correct answer. Plication is in large operation. Complete excision, no, we are, if at all we are doing excision, we do only partial excision of the sac, not complete excision. Incision and drainage of the hydrocele, no. It should be averted also. So MCQ number 7. A 50-year-old male present with bilateral scrotal swellings. On examination, both sides are transliminant and non-tender. Patient has a history of filariasis. What is the most likely cause of the hydrocele? A. Patent processes, defective absorption of the fluid, excessive production of the fluid, and D. Lymphatic obstruction. <coughs> the correct answer is Lymphatic obstruction, because it is filariasis, the lymphatic will get obstructed, and that is the cause of the uh, filariasis in this case. I don't see the lymphatic obstruction lead to the, this thing. So, patent process vaginal is the cause for the hydrocele in a pediatric patient. Yeah, congenital hydrocele, the cause is uh, PPD or patent processes vaginal, PPV. Defective absorption of the fluid <coughs> is because of the primary hydrocele. Excessive production will be there in case of secondary hydrocele and lymphatic obstruction in filariasis. 
Okay, what is the most common type of primary hydrocele in adult patient? A. Vaginal hydrocele. B. Funicular hydrocele. C. Encysted hydrocele. And D. Bilocular hydrocele. Among this, the most common type is A. The vaginal hydrocele. That is fluid inside the tunica vaginalis. Vaginal hydrocele is the most common type of the primary hydrocele in adult patient. So what these are the various types of the hydrocele. So this is a congenital hydrocele where the pattern processes vaginalis is there. See, it is there. So the it is the tunica vaginalis have got connection with the peritoneal cavity. So fluid will come here, and this is the congenital variety. This is funicular variety where the sac is ending just above the uh, testis. This is infantile variety where the sac is extending up to the internal ring. This is <coughs> the encysted hydrocele where above and below the sac, the hernial sac has got obliterated. The central part is patterned, filled with fluid. This is encysted hydrocele. So this is the commonest variety, the vaginal hydrocele. This is bilocular hydrocele where <coughs> there will be a swelling in the anterior abdominal wall has got a, that is a cystic swelling that has got the connection with the scrotal swelling. So if you press one area, you can get that fluctuation in the other cyst. This is what is called cross fluctuation. And the final, this picture is <coughs> hernia of the hydrocele sac. You are seeing the momentum is blocking the internal ring. Yeah, in MCQ number 9, which of the following conditions is associated with transillumination on examination of the scrotal swelling? Varicocele, epididymocritis, testicular tarsen, and hydrocele. See, naturally it is hydrocele, it's typically transillumination is there, presence of clear fluid in the scrotum, whereas varicocele is not at all a uh, Swelling, it is the dilatation of the pampiniform plexus, the veins. Epididyma ocritis and tar testicular tarsen both are solid swellings. So, they were, there won't be any trans elimination. <laughs> MCQ number 10, which of the following is a characteristic feature of secondary hydrocele? A. Positive trans elimination. B. Difficult to palpate the testis. C. Testis is easily palpable. D. Large size. So the correct answer is testis is easily palpable because in secondary hydrocele there will be only minimal um, fluid collection is there. So there will be some underlying pathology like for example if it is acute epididymocritis or even in testicular tumor there may be a secondary hydrocele of little bit of fluid will be there in which case testis is easily palpable. Yeah, that is the uh, correct answer. So, as I told you in the previous, I mean, the uh, uh, video, I have uh, published three books recently in Amazon. So, all these are very important. One is, of course, mastering MCQ in medical exams. Another one is mastering MEQ, that is, modified essay question. And another one is mastering ASCII in medical exams. In my institution, actually we are using all these three methods for assessing the MBBS students or the undergraduate medical students. Each exam, they have to undergo MCQ, MEQ, as well as ASCII exam. Each, each one of the university or even in uh, end of posting exam, they used to appear for all these three. So that's why I have written this one. But those who want the MCQ, I have given the link for these books, not only these books, for all my books, I have linked the link to the Amazon site. You can go and buy from the link which I have given in the description of this video. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very helpful to you, kindly share this video in your social media and subscribe to this channel. You can also press the bell button so that you can get notified.
regarding my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.